Welcome back to Screen Rant's coverage of San Diego Comic-Con 2023. Thank you guys so much for joining joining me. I'm with Mattel. You wait, first of all, introduce yourselves and tell me what you do. I am Derek Handy, VP of Design for the Action Figure team, so I'm overseeing all the Action Figure brands. That is a uh, heavy task, sir. It's a good gig. I'm Ed Duncan. I'm SVP of Design for Action Figures, Plush, uh, Games, and I'm over Inventor Relations for all brands at Mattel. Wow, that is a lot. Look, I went down by your booth earlier. It is phenomenal. I loved every single thing I saw. I wish that I could have gotten that lottery. And I wish I wasn't working. If I wasn't working, I'd be in that line probably right now camping out. That'd be my new Hall H is, is getting these Mattel things. Um, the first thing I got to talk about, your sh guys' shirts, Masters of the Universe. Uh, there's an exclusive here at Comic-Con, the motherboard figure. Now, this is the largest ever Masters of the Universe figure. Chat me up about it. Let's talk about it. Um, why motherboard? And talk to me about some of the features this figure has for those, those Masters of the Universe collectors out there. So based off uh, the Netflix content, uh, so new character that people aren't necessarily that familiar with, but it's great to extend the Motu universe, bring in freshness to it. It's a big figure. It's 12 inches, so it's twice the size of any of the other figures. Posable wings. It, it's amazing. Those yeah. wings are super cool. Uh, talk to me about the, the design of those wings a little bit. So, yeah, it's all articulated. You can fold it into a nice tight space that you can fit on your shelf or expand it to, I think it gets to about 16, 18 inches. Uh, uh, yeah. One thing I love about what you guys do at Mattel is also your box art, because I think that's just a work of art by itself. It, it stands beautifully anywhere you want to put it. Um, what goes into some of those designs for that stuff? We have a dedicated team that loves, and even going back to the stuff from the 80s, all that amazing artwork. I mean, you have a couple of those paintings in your office. It's just breathtaking artwork, and they want to make sure they're keeping that flame going into all the, the Comic-Con, even the stuff that's at retail, that's just incredible. making sure it, it's a piece of art in the package itself. It's incredible. Well, and on the Comic-Con ones, you have a little bit of more money to play with, so you can do some trickier things. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. So uh, I think there's some magnets in that box. And Really? You, you yeah. can spend a little bit more money on the package. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the packaging alone in some of, some of these things is incredible. Like, I, I'm a big WWE Ultimate Edition collector. Like, mm -hmm. I got back into collecting action figures based on that one toy line. Nice. Um, shout out to Kyle Peterson, who was, uh, I watch his YouTube videos, and that's what got me back into, into WWE. Uh, the line. Um, and you have a beautiful Muhammad Ali figure down there. Uh, this is a great, uh, this is complements really well with the, the WrestleMania one stuff with Hulk Hogan and Mr. T, which you already released in that line. Mm. Talk to me about uh, bringing Muhammad Ali to the WWE universe line, universe ultimate edition line. Uh, so Muhammad Ali is an icon and Absolutely. it's an honor for us to bring that to our WWE line and his presence at WrestleMania 1 just gives us the window to do that. Uh, it's a really great version of him, and then we're able to do that boxing version of him, too, to just give everybody a figure that they've been wanting forever. That's the I love that about this line because it comes with so many different accessories and facial mm -hmm. expressions. This one comes with the referee T-shirt that yeah. he had in uh, WrestleMania 1, but it also comes with his classic boxing gloves that he had in WrestleMania 2, and you can pose that beautifully with that Roddy Piper figure. Talk to me about um, including both of those uh, looks for, for this figure. Uh, it, was, it was a stroke of genius. It actually comes with a... Soft goods robe too. Yes, so really uh, put him out there in the, the full boxing look. That's incredible. That's incredible. Uh, let's move on and talk some Jurassic Park for a second because there's this there's this great Steven Spielberg director action figure from Jurassic Park, uh, and you guys are celebrating uh, Jurassic Park. Can we talk about that a little bit? What went into making the uh, Steven Spielberg director action figure? That was a lot of fun. And speaking of great package, the full clap box with the oh. top that. Rotate, yeah, it's really good. Uh, and we really wanted to, to pay homage to Steven Spielberg and it's just how amazing Jurassic Park is with the anniversary. Uh, and down to the details of having the, the armature that the Dilophosaurus yes. sits on, all those little behind the scenes details that we're sure collectors are gonna love. Now, I haven't been down to the booth today. Uh, are there any reveals that you guys have uh, that wasn't there yesterday that I wasn't able to we see? We haven't on Jurassic, so Jurassic we have a fan panel tomorrow. Okay. Uh, that we're talking about in booth uh, showing behind the scenes that will show images of some of the new stuff coming out. Uh, our big unveiling, uh, we've got the crowdfund for the Jurassic Park gates. We've got yes. the full 3D of the gates there functioning, gates are opening, sounds, lights. It's awesome. That's, that's but, there's, but there's new figures being revealed in the booth right. every day across yeah. all the brands. Oh, amazing. Can we get uh, any teases? He's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> we, we showed some uh, new Motu stuff today, right? Yeah, we showed Gwildor, uh, the Meg Foster Evelyn from the, uh, the original movie. No Motu. way. Yeah, that's uh, in the booth right now. 
Yeah. That's a good figure. Yeah. Guess where I'm going right after that. <laughs> um, I do want to talk a little bit more about Jurassic Park because you guys do have a panel tomorrow and you guys are going to be mm -hmm. revealing a lot more. Um, what, what, are, what can fans kind of expect from that without revealing anything on the panel? Lots of new dinosaurs, uh, which is the great thing about Jurassic. You've got this heritage of all the new species that are coming out. Like what you know for T-Rexes and Velociraptors in the past, but even the team will send back and forth whatever new story of a new dinosaur that comes out. And fortunately, Universal and Amblin are willing to let us do that and branch out to other new species that have never been seen before uh, and really make our interpretations of those. That's so it's a lot of fun. It, it's a deep well of uh, characters and dinosaurs. We That's incredible. Yeah. Now, look, I know toys is your guys' business, but are you guys collectors of anything yourselves? Oh, absolutely. It's yeah. an occupational hazard. <laughs> what, 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 what lines are you collecting yourself? I collect like old obscure stuff. I'm an old man and uh, I, I grew up in the 70s, so um, I, I have a lot of toys, a lot of Japanese action figures from the 70s, um, uh, like old Battlestar Galactica stuff, uh, old, old Marvel and DC stuff from the 70s. How about yourself? Uh, Jurassic really got me back into it. Get uh, out of here. So it ex starting that out, launching the brand uh, in 2018, there, there's a fairly large collection of dinosaurs in my house. Uh, and then the other is 12-inch uh, figures. So so you would say that the Jurassic Park stuff is really your baby at Mattel? Yeah, I have a few babies at Mattel. But yeah, that's, there's a lot of love, and being able to do that fresh and different uh, was really nice. That's incredible. Yeah. Mama loves all her children the same. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Now, um, let's talk about the Masters of the Universe uh, figure that you guys revealed today. Um, what went into the process of, of getting that figure made? What, how did you guys decide on that one? The motherboard figure? Yeah, no, not the motherboard figure. Oh. The one you revealed at the at the uh, at the booth today. We revealed the, uh, Gwildor, yes, uh, and then we did uh, Skeletech. Uh, so both of those are based on how they're seen in Netflix. So that's working closely with uh, Rob and the team to get the assets from them to make sure that we're getting it right and have the full turns, uh, which is really great. They've been amazing uh, and giving us the assets for that. Yeah, you guys do such an amazing job with putting together uh, these figures and then the accessories that go with them. I mean, you guys are talking yeah. about the soft goods with Muhammad Ali. Um, now, I'm going to talk about WWE again. A sure, little sure. Bit. Uh, pick your brain here a little bit. So uh, that line is fantastic, from the elite figures to the ultimate edition figures, and you guys do such a great job at the, the crowdfunding stuff because uh, I'm not going to lie, that some of those uh, rings, the ring that you guys have down there, I, mm -hmm. they were talking to me yesterday about this ring and how they put it together. It was almost like a breakdown of like making an actual wrestling ring. There's yeah. literally panels underneath like the canvas mat that – Fans wouldn't normally see, but you know that they're there as a collector. What goes into that decision making to make that kind of stuff so detailed? The people that designed that line, and, and all of our lines are true fans, and yeah. they they know these details. They know that they would be important to them as collectors, and they build the line that they wish they had. Incredible. Uh, are there any dream figures at Mattel that uh, you guys want to see produced personally? Dream figures. Dream figures. I feel like. We've covered a lot of bases, uh, but there's there's always more to do. I mean, there's we're talking about a couple species of dinosaurs that we want to do. Uh, we've been talking about uh, some extra WWE talents that, of course, we're always finessing rights and working with WWE team to make sure we can do those extra characters that everybody are clamoring for. Right. Yeah. yeah. Something we talked about yesterday. I talked uh, spoke a little bit with the WWE team yesterday about this and. Uh, one of the things that is incredible to me is the detail on those figures in terms of like even like the tattoos, right? Yeah. So like mm -hmm. if a wrestler gets a new tattoo, yeah. uh, it's immediately on like the, the next figure yes. that you guys produce of them. Yeah. Uh, how difficult is that for you guys keeping up with like the looks and these iconic like outfits that they that they wear? Oh, it, it, we're costly on our toes. Yeah. It, as the guys go to a WrestleMania or go to an event, they're taking photos of and the next day going back to the asset team at WWE saying, oh, we need this, we need this, we need this, we need turns of that tattoo, and they've been great at getting us those assets as well. But yeah, it's, they're very it's, responsive. Yeah. yeah. It, it's a constant push to make sure you're keeping up with whatever happened this week. That is, And there's incredible. always something new. It's yeah. so dynamic. Like either uh, something new's happened or somebody might get injured or it's just a constant liquid state yeah. where you're just reacting to what happened. That's Which fair. the nice thing as well with WWE is Going back to that heritage and going back to how people love specific WrestleManias and specific matches, it's not that when something new comes out, the old stuff is just wiped clean. Right. Everybody loves every single match and every single show that you can still produce those the retro characters and 
and have all those costume details. And it's got such a legacy and heritage. Yeah. You know, when I was down there, I saw a lot of my, that was some of my favorite era stuff. Brett the Hitman Hart is my favorite wrestler of all time. And you guys have him in his uh, Attitude Era uh, mm -hmm. Heart Foundation, it's Stable Heart Foundation, not the Tag Team Heart Foundation, uh, gear. And it looks incredible. It looks like, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there's a lot of emphasis on this Monday Night War era. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, can you guys speak to that a little bit? The, it is a favorite era of quite a few people that work for the company. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. Those older uh, talent, um, those are some of the harder figures to do because a new mm -hmm. person, you can take them in a room and scan them, oh. and you get a lot of information from them. But like... Somebody from back in the 80s, even if they're still alive, they don't look like they looked in the sure. 80s. So yeah. that's just raw talent, somebody sculpting that from photos. Yeah. Get out of here. And that's the trick, is to make a figure that you don't have any reference or they're not around look as good as someone that you scanned last week. Yeah. Time out. Wait a minute. So <laughs> what you're telling me is that there's a sculptor that actually sculpts those. It's not those aren't like like no, I guess they couldn't be scanned. You can't like, go back in time and scan something. Yeah, you can't like put photos in and nah. yeah. and generate. Nah, that is artistry. Up. Yes. Wow. I wish <laughs> you, I, you 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 would have fooled me. I would have never have guessed that because some of those figures are like spot on. Dead. But that's how we used to do it. Uh, the the scanning has come and helped a lot. Uh, but you know, back in the old days, things were just sculpted by humans. Yeah, yeah, well, nobody does it like you guys at Mattel. I'll tell you that right now, because some you. of those figures are, are very, very lifelike. Uh, look, thank you guys for stopping by and joining us at Screen Rant here. Um, we are huge fans of Mattel. 